What's up, guys? It's your girl, Matt Cox, with M.A. Couture Crafting, and I am so happy to be here today. Yes, me. I went to Disneyland, no surprise there, but I participated in their egg extravaganza, and what that is is an egg hunt for anybody to participate. You pay like 10 bucks, and you get this card, and then you get to go hunting the eggs throughout the park. They're doing it at Disneyland, they're doing it at DCA, they're doing it at Downtown Disney, and I had so much fun doing it at Disneyland. I think I'm going to do it at DCA too. I just, I had a good time. And it's running through Easter. And while I was doing that, I was thinking, you know, this would be kind of cool if what? If I had some Tula Pink eggs. <laughs> so I went to the Temecula Quilt Company, I don't know, like probably sometime last year. It's been a really long time. And I remember she had a pattern for making fabric eggs. And I thought that was the, one of the coolest things about her store. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it right here so you guys can check that out. But it was one of the coolest things I saw in that store. I was like, wait, what? It was a carton full of eggs. And they looked just beautiful, especially in the colors that she had chosen, which were, I believe, her fabrics. So I decided that I would do it, you know, my way with a little tulip pink fabric. And I love the way they came out. I want to just, I wish I had started this a little bit earlier because they would probably be all around the house. But if you like this and you want to try it, I suggest you do. Go on ahead and shoot on over to my blog and I will send you to where the pattern is. And it's really a very, very simple pattern. These eggs do not take a long time. They're fun to do. I used paper mache eggs to, to stuff them, but you could certainly stuff them with batting or scraps or whatnot. Another great use for your scraps, guys. So if you'd like to see how these eggs came together and if you'd like to see me hunting for eggs at Disneyland, if you're going to do the extravaganza at Disneyland and you do not want to know where they are, skip that part. I will show you where to jump to right here. And uh, if you'd like to see me hunting these eggs and what the eggs look like in the park, keep watching. Can you guys find the key? Now we've got Mickey at the corn dog cart. So much fun. I'm so entertained. Found her. There she is right there. Super cute. Never would have found this guy. I don't know how I stumbled upon him because he is very well hidden. Now we got to put him on there. Can you guys see Tink up there? She's cute. Why on earth am I in fantasy land? at 11 o'clock. That's a no-no, I know better. So let's get out of here and go to find the next one. I am so totally entertained by this. So this is where we are now, Big Thunder. I'm starving, maybe we'll eat at Harbor Gallery or um, yeah, let's get a lobster roll. I'll take one chip and a lobster roll, please. A lot happening here, it's already quite packed. But we found another one. And there's Thumper. Can you see Thumper? Cutie patootie. There is Dale. Right there. Super cute. Look, and I found the very last one. So much fun. All done. I got Cheshire. Such a cutie. This is probably one of the most fun, cute projects I've done to date. And this pattern is coming from Temecula Quilt Co. And I'll never forget the first time I saw these eggs um, that she had displayed in her shop. Unfortunately, her shop is closed, but the egg pattern is still available. So you just cut it out of that sheet above, and then I'm going around and I'm cutting it on my fabric. It's doubled fabric, so I'm getting two when I cut it. You can cut it with some scissors. I did some with scissors. I did some with the rotary cutter. I did some where I traced the shape and then I cut it out, no big deal. But you wanna do four of these shapes for an egg. Very, very simple. And I grabbed those paper mache eggs from Joann's. I saw them at Michael's. They probably have them at the Dollar Tree store. Now we are going to just go around the egg, just half of the egg, with a quarter inch seam. And I go all the way around. I'll show you where I stopped because when I, I was like, wait, where do I stop? And I started at the back end and I just kept going around this. Now I'm holding this with one hand, <laughs> camera, one hand, I'm sewing. So 
when I was doing this, when I wasn't recording, this was going much, much faster. But I wanted you guys to see where I ended. I just sewed off of this tip here. I sewed off the whole little thing and it works out fine. You don't need to stop right there in the middle and then worry about picking it up. Just sew right off and then clip your threads and do that with both pair. Now you wanna be careful to make sure, depending upon what look you're going for, that you do the opposite so that, you know, right here I have pink and gray. And so I wanted to be sure that pink and gray were touching each other. I didn't want double pink. I hope that makes sense. I didn't want the pinks touching each other. I wanted pink touching gray. So just be sure that you're sewing it the proper way to do that. And the best way to do that is to open it up right sides together and then lay the other fabrics on top of it and then go on ahead and grab where it needs to be sewn and then sew like that. And then after you're finished, you have two pairs that look like this. I should say one pair technically. And you just open up the seams for the first one. I really like them with the seams pressed open. You probably could press open the seams on the other seam too. I don't, but I'll show you what I do with the other seams. So I just try to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Then I'm gonna do the same thing. I use that Biani stiletto initially to open up those seams real nice and good. I swear by that stiletto, it's just different. <laughs> and I use the back end to open up the seams. Then I line up the top part and just stick a pin in there. It's the only part that I pinned. Everything else I just kind of let happen as it does. And now we're gonna go around the whole thing with right sides together. Again, this does not have to take long at all. This is actually quite quick, even with the little bit of hand sewing that I'm gonna do in a minute. So I went all around the shape and instead of pressing these open, I chose to just trim these down to about an eighth of an inch. So I sewed it a quarter of an inch and then I just pulled it down to an eighth of an inch. Then I turned it right sides out and poked it, poked it, poked it a little bit with my purple thing. And then you stick the egg in here. The trick to getting it smooth is to really push that egg down in there and smooth it out. Like really pinch it till it gets all the way down. Push on those seams a little bit and you get a pretty smooth egg. And then here I just turned down the edge probably about a half of an inch. You could turn it down a quarter of an inch, half an inch. I am not being exact here. This is the bottom of the egg. Nobody is gonna see the bottom of my eggs the way that I did them, the way that I like displayed them. So I really didn't care. And so I just turned it down as I was going along. I didn't press it so that it was even or anything like that. You guys, I'm just literally turning it down and doing a basting stitch. So in one side, out one side, in one side, out one side. You're basically making a little drawstring pouch for your egg. And once I get it nice and tight, I just run this stitch through one more time around the sides, grabbing probably two or three folds at a time. Then I just tie a knot. <laughs> it's the bottom of the egg, no big deal. And bam, you have an egg. Just that simple. There is not much to it. I don't care how you do the bottom of the egg. It's the bottom of the egg. And now look, it's a cutie patootie. Aw, isn't it cute? Here's another one that I did. Aren't they lovely? So cute, so much fun. Enjoy with this project, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, bye-bye.